Today we're going to solve a uh, typical problem that you see in fluid systems. Now, um, this is a typical problem. Uh, this is the steady state problem with a small deviation around the steady state. Most of the problems that you will see in the book, uh, in the homework, in the field, most of them are uh, a kind of a steady state problem. It's at steady state. Then the dynamic system starts when there is a small deviation around the steady state. Everything will change. For example, for example, let's uh, study this example. We have a multi-tank system. We have two tanks, two valves. Okay. Now, before we start the time, before the dynamic system starts, everything was at steady state. Okay. There was no small deviation. We have a flow in. When you see this bar, that means it's at steady state. So before the timer, before we start the timer, let me show you, show you using the pen. Okay. At T, at T uh, less than zero. Okay. Everything was at steady state. Okay. There is no small deviation, only steady state. Okay. Okay. I'll show you just for understanding to understand. Okay. Because when you solve these things, uh, maybe you will, uh, when you solve, it's all about mathematics, but for understanding the physics, what's going on, you need to understand this. So before we start the dynamic system, everything was at steady state. We have flow in steady state, not changing with time and the head inside the tank at steady state, the flow between C1 and C2 through valve one was at steady state. The flow through valve two was at steady state. Okay. R1, R2 are constant. C1 and C2 are constant. The capacity, the cross-sectional area. Okay. All right. This is before we start the st uh, dynamic system. Okay. All right. Now let me, at T equal to zero, something has changed. Okay. At T, equal or greater than zero okay something has changed there was a small deviation around the steady state in the flow in i'm gonna call it small qi so this is like it was like a 22,000. this is like 2000 cp liter per minute or whatever for example this is a small like 10 30 or 50 small deviation around the steady state now, as a result, as a result, due to this small deviation, there was a small deviation in the head, in the tank number one, I'm going to call it small h1. There was a small deviation in the flow inside uh, valve number two, I'm going to call it uh, small q1. There was a small deviation in the head inside tank number two, I'm going to call it h2. There was a small deviation in the valve number two, and I'm going to call it q, small q2. All right? Now, in this problem, what I want you to do, I'm going to say this is my input. This is small deviation, QI, is my input. And he said this is small deviation in valve number two is my output. Find the equation of motion in order to find the transfer function, where the input is small QI and the output is small Q2. Okay, the valve number two. This capital letter because it's in the S, uh, in the S domain. Okay, it's a small Q two, the output and the input small Q I. Okay. Now this is the final answer. This is the final answer that you see here. How to get the final answer? All right, we will do it step by step. You start with tank number one. Tank number one. Show the equation of motion. What's the equation of motion in tank number one? It's going to be C1 dH1 after linearization dH1 dT equal to uh, the flow in small qi minus uh, the flow out q1. This is the equation of motion describing tank number one. Okay. All right. Okay, now we need one more equation describing the resistance, the linearized resistance in valve number one. So R1 will be, what is the, uh, the uh, head inside R1? Do you remember what's the head inside R1? It's the head before 
because the flow going this way, before we look at the flow going this way, so the head will be the head before minus the head after. So the head before, after linearization, it's going to be H1 minus the head after, after linearization, it's going to be small h2 over the only flow inside the valve after linearization, which is going to be small q1. You see all the steady state values has gone. Why it's gone? You, you can see the previous uh, uh, video, okay? In the lecture, you can see that if the, after linearization, all the steady state either will cancel with each other or it will be zero after uh, derivation. So this is equation number two. All right, so this is for tank number one. We're gonna do the same thing for tank number two. Derive the equation of motion, C2, D small h2 over dt equal to the flow in, what's the flow in after, uh, after derivation? It's gonna be small q1 minus uh, uh, flow in. This is the only flow in and this is the only flow out. So minus Q2, and this is equation number three. This is the equation of motion describing tank number uh, two, okay? We need one more equation describing the resistance, R2, after linearization, we call it linearized. The head before, what's the head before? H2, minus the head after, the head after. This is empty, it's atmospheric. So atmospheric, what's the head of atmospheric pressure? It is zero, okay? And what's the only uh, flow inside R2? It's small, small Q, small Q2. Okay, this is equation number four. Okay, equation number four. All right, now we need uh, one more slide. What, can, what are you gonna do next? Obviously, you will take the Laplace transform. So you can see two tanks is like a multi-loop in electrical system like a multi uh, degree freedom in the in mechanical system just more work more equations of motions and more work okay the same procedure the same procedure we will take the laplace transform all, all of all these equations then we will derive the transfer function so um, the next step i will uh, 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 i will take the laplace transform and then i will show you uh, the uh, let me show you it's already done In the, uh, you can see that in the notes already. We did it already in the notes. You see, this is what we got. C1, dH1 over dt equal to Qi minus Q1. This is what we derived already. R1, the same. Q1, Q2, the same. H1, H2 over Q2. Let me check with you quickly. Is it the same? Qi, Q1. Qi, Q1. Yes, very good. H1, H2. Just double check so we don't make any mistake that we will regret later. Okay, since we have time. Q1 and Q2, yes, very good. H2 over Q2, H2, very well, very well. All right, so what's the next step? Next step, take Laplace transform all of, of all these four equations, assuming zero initial conditions. So from one, this is the Laplace transform from one, equation number one, this is the Laplace transform from equation number two, assuming zero initial conditions. Okay, this is the Laplace transform of equation number three and four. Okay, remember R and two are constants. Okay, R and two. So what you're gonna do next, what you're gonna do next, after taking the Laplace transform, let me write it here. Okay, after taking Laplace transform, we don't have much space, so I'm gonna try to uh, write it down. Uh, after taking Laplace transform, after taking Laplace transform, assuming zero initial conditions, okay, you will have, you will have uh, four, how many? We will have four algebraic, algebraic equations with how many variables? How many variables? Let me check with you. How many variables we will have? How many variables? Look, how many algebraic equations do we have here? One, two, three, four. How many variables we have? We have H1 and H2. We have QI, we have Q1, we have Q2. That's all. 
the rest are uh, either s or uh, a constant so we have five variables okay we have how many five variables so you will have four algebraic equations with the five with the five variables or functions which are they h1 h2 uh, qi uh, q1 and q2 right all right so you have five uh, you have four equations and five unknowns or five variables which one you need to eliminate you need first you check what you need to keep you need to keep qi and q2 qi and q2 so this is what you need to keep this is going to be your input and this is going to be your output so you need to eliminate h1 and h2 and q1 all right this is what we're going to this is the similar to what we did in fact in uh, electrical systems and uh, mechanical system when we have like uh, two degree freedom or uh, two loops same thing same thing okay and it's already been solved for you here for your convenience so these are the four equations then you need to eliminate h2 you start with h2 eliminate h2 okay then eliminate uh, h1 okay then eliminate q1 after that you will have a function only with the qi and q2 collect all the variables of q2 together on one side and collect all the variables of q1 uh, qi on the other side then your uh, uh, transfer function will be ready don't forget to simplify the transfer function in this way from starting from the highest power to the lowest is just the way that you put it in MATLAB okay and that will be all it will take a few minutes okay you need to exercise so this is a typical problem okay for steady state problem with the um, deviation or perturbation around the steady state thank you very much